Hi everyone, it's Jan Thyssalatz here and welcome to my channel. I decided to join the fun and draw my own rendition of the Six Fan Arts Challenge. In this video I plan to talk about the characters and why I love them, but something happened which I can't just leave behind without saying anything. I was decided on which characters to draw before the news about Joan Rowling, making a fool of herself and going completely turf hit the fan. And it made me very angry and sad, since I'm a transmasculine person myself, and it really has a very serious personal damage to me. But anyhow, I don't want the fact that she is transphobic and ignorant to take away that huge part of my youth which Harry Potter fandom was. It was my first internet community, fandom friends, gay ships and fanfiction. Somehow I first came out as a trans mask person to people I met through Harry Potter fandom. So no matter what bullshit Rowling says about trans people, I will continue to love the fandom because it was such a huge part of my life and it is so much bigger than her and thankfully so so much more inclusive. Somehow it made me think that in a way I am more attached to the fandom and to the fandom main content than to the original books and movies. Do you sometimes feel the same? Alright, I'm done with venting and now we can move on to the characters and drawing and all the good stuff you probably came here for. Oh, by the way, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you won't miss out on other videos by me. The characters I will be drawing are Professor Snape, Lucius Malfoy, Eric Lanshaw, Charles Xavier, Geralt of Rivia and Yaskier. Yep, right the way I ship them, so it kinda six fan arts in free ships sort of things. I decided to draw Professor Snape and Lucius Malfoy partly because a lot of my followers on Instagram requested them, but also because they were one of my first ships ever. I remember role-playing as Lucius and reading fanfics about the two. When the internet was still on dial-up, can you imagine that? I was very much into darker characters back then, in my teens, and it felt so nostalgic to draw them. Next ones are Eric and Charles from X-Men First Class. Ooh, I still have so many feels for this ship. I guess everyone has that one ship that always will make your heart lose a bit. Oh well. At least Witcher creators seem okay for now, and let's keep our fingers crossed that this is how it stays, because you never know nowadays. So I'll just say I loved Henry Cavill's Geralt much much more than I expected and I didn't expect much, to be honest. After watching the trailer for the first time, I thought that Henry Cavill was hugely miscast. But isn't it nice when something is way better than what you think it would be? Well, those kind of pleasant surprises should happen to all of us, you know? Well, it happened to me because um, no matter how many flaws the show itself has, and it does, Henry Cavill's Geralt, to my surprise, wasn't one of them. And Joey Bailey's Yaskier was a huge success. This ship is golden and partly, even not partly, but in major, because of Yaskier. And Yaskier, I think, deserves all the love in the world and especially Geralt's. Which brings us to another topic, which kinda annoys me a little bit about the show. It felt a little bit sad and wrong that even though Geralt and Yaskier have an incredible chemistry in the show, the story writers kind of downplayed their friendship to a weird dynamic when Yaskier runs around Geralt and gets rejected all the time. While in the books, their friendship, no matter how you view it as a platonic or in any way sexual relationship, was completely mutual and Yaskier was one of the closest people in Geralt's life. I hope they will explore these characters' relationships more and give them some depth. But even if they don't, which I'm kind of afraid they won't. That's what fandom writers are for. They often make stories which are far better than canon and well, thank you dear writers for doing all the job. You really make our world brighter with what you do. If you watched this video this far, and thank you so much if you have, then time has come for a little, you know, artist talk about how I do art and how hard it is and how clueless I am 
clueless, clueless I am <laughs> at times about what I do. I'm sorry for my English. Well, this challenge was really challenging for me because I'm so inconsistent with my art style. I've been drawing and really taking it seriously for five years now, but I still haven't found a style that would feel like my thing. So my style, if you can call it a style, varies quite noticeably depending on the character, the mood of the picture or my own emotional state, the medium I use and I don't know, the face of the moon or whatever. I try not to see it as a problem and just continue to do what I feel like doing. But with this challenge, I wanted all the characters to be drawn in one style so the template would look nice and balanced. And also, I set a goal for myself to not overcomplicate things. Because this is my huge problem, not only in drawing, just in life. I'm the thinker and the person who tries to be a perfectionist, who always overcomplicates everything. I never seem to stop a simple design and it's very hard for me to simplify my visual language. But putting six different characters on one page and making them all look consistent in one style really taught me a lot. That really took me out of my comfort zone and made me think how to create a visual language which communicates to the audience and really shows what I want to tell about those characters. What really helped me is that I went in baby steps and first I established overall poses and composition of the whole page, then made a rough sketch and a clean sketch of each character trying to stay within one style. According to my initial plan, each character was supposed to have an object that corresponds to their story, like Snape's wand or the coin that Eric levitates. It was pretty easy with Geralt and Yaskier too, since the loot and the sword were pretty obvious. But it wasn't that easy with Charles and Lucius. Because the wheelchair won't fit into the image, obviously, so for Charles I had to work more with a signature pose, not with an object. And with Lucius, making him hold another wand seemed kind of boring to me. It would give the composition even more symmetry and mirror effect, but since all other characters and objects were not symmetrical, I didn't think that was a good option. So after giving it some thought, I came up with the cane idea. It just seemed to work better with Lucy's character. I have no idea why, but if I would try to analyze it, maybe that's because the cane sort of gives his pose this aristocratic poshy feel. Maybe it's just like that. And it was really fun to draw. Actually designing Lucy's outfit and overall look was the most fun of it all because I didn't want to go strictly after the designs used in the movie and came up with my own. And since I really like period clothes and I like designing original character clothes, creating his outfit was a huge pleasure. Finally, when the line art was ready, I could move on to coloring. To tell the truth, I have a love-hate relationship with color. There was a time when I couldn't tell a cool hue from the warm one, while being able to draw pretty decent line art. And it literally felt like the drawing was made by a person who knows what they're doing, while the coloring was scribbled by a three-year-old child who is probably colorblind. And actually, I think a lot of really colorblind people could pull this off much better than I did back then. I often thought that color is simply not my thing until I developed a passion for watercolors and started educating myself simply because I had to. <laughs> Actually, you can't do watercolor without understanding color. But still, I always feel insecure to start painting. It feels like jumping off a cliff every time. Even if I'm very much sure that it will be okay and I know how I want my image to be rendered, I still feel that awkward feeling of not being confident enough and being afraid to ruin everything. But when I manage to start coloring, I get totally lost in it and it's a very creative process for me. I start playing with colors, harmonizing them, building up relationship between them. Probably because it was so hard for me to learn, I really pay a lot of attention to my colors now and it brings me so much joy when I see that the result looks nice. 
So if you like me, feel that coloring is super hard and you could never understand it and that your sketches and line arts look better before you color them. And even more, those artists who manage to paint amazing pictures without any line art at all, just out of some pure color spots, are kind of magicians and you're a little stupid muggle in front of them. Believe me, it does all come with practice and studying. You can do it too. At some point of my drawing process of this picture, I suddenly had this image in my head just right out of the blue, <laughs> I don't know where it came from, which I couldn't get rid of. I imagined all of those characters come alive in their little windows, I mean the template, and then they started singing cell block tango with lyrics adapted to their personal stories. It was so funny that it was almost distracting, but I really enjoyed <laughs> The you. I have no idea really where this fantasy came from, but it just seemed to fit them all perfectly. Don't you ever just have those weird thoughts when you're drawing? As far as I know, when I draw, I make the weirdest and funniest of faces because I almost always try to make my face replicate the facial expressions of my characters. So when anybody sees me drawing I feel so embarrassed and probably when I was drawing this that was the most embarrassing moment ever because I was just humming the cell block tango and making the faces of all of the six characters so I kind of looked like I was well nuts a little bit I think so I really hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed drawing this and uh, making this a little podcast about <laughs> what I feel about the characters and how I do my drawings and I really hope that you will watch it till the end, see the end result with a close-up, subscribe to my channel, like my video, maybe comment and tell me about your favorite ships and characters, especially the ones you loved when you were younger and when you first came into fandom and um, just come and watch other of my videos and maybe, maybe, just maybe support me on Patreon to help me produce more quality content for you. So see you guys. Thanks for being with me. Till next time.